Hi guys! In this video, we will create a toolbar and a sidebar for navigation. With each video, we will look at new WebEx widgets, controls, functions or features that you can use. I will demonstrate all these things by creating a coffee shop management system. You can follow through the videos and challenge yourself to create it together with me. Since in future videos I will demonstrate work with different types of data and databases, I've created a new project on my local web server. For now, you can skip this step, but we will need it in the future. As usual, here we have the WebEx files. This time, next to WebEx CSS and JS files, I've added files that are necessary for Sidebar. It's a free WebEx extension and we will need it for Sidebar creation. This component isn't included in the library package and should be taken from this link. Also, I added a font and created an external stylesheet in the CSS folder. We will begin by creating a toolbar for our app. Let's initialize it. For that, we begin by creating a row layout, which will contain our toolbar. Toolbar controls are put into the elements array and are arranged into a horizontal line. To distinguish between horizontal and vertical control arrangement, use column or row arrays. We will add a button. It will be the sidebar toggle button. UI related icon is a button like borderless clickable control with an icon in it. You can use font awesome icons. You need to write the icon name. In our case, bars. Now, let's create a label and two more buttons with icons. This is how our toolbar looks without styling. For now, let's add a badge property, which we can use later, just to visually see how notifications could look with the help of badges. Since badges take up place inside of the button, we can make the button a little bit wider. UI related toolbar inherits from layout is the place to nest all the possible controls including buttons, labels, icons, checkboxes, combos, and others. Now let's create a sidebar. For that, I added two WebEx free extension files, sidebar.js and CSS in the head section. Let's create a column and initialize the sidebar inside of it. I will need some data. For this purpose, we will create a variable. It will contain menu items. Let's add some random initial data. For this project, we will keep all of the menu data inside of menu.js in data folder. Let's add it to the project. Sidebar data configuration contains the description of menu items, corresponding icons and sub-items, if we need them. Here we have data for two sidebar items that each have two sub-items. We see that we already have a sidebar with items and sub-items. Now let's make it work. We will use multi-view that will show the necessary view. Multiview helps you efficiently use space on the page by placing different views into one and the same area. Only one view is visible at a time. The others are accessible with the help of dedicated buttons. The direct initialization of the component view multiview is optional. And you can just initialize cells and the view will be automatically recognized. So we can skip the multiview. We need to add ID and cells property. Cells contain array of views. We will add cell information to multi-view cells in accordance with sidebar data contents. In this video, we will not dive deep into the WebEx functionality since this course focuses on the user interface part. But we need to add a little bit of functionality for our sidebar to work with the multi-view. Let's add few simple functions. There is a whole dedicated course to WebEx functionality, so don't worry about it. We will get to that. We can use on. It allows attaching custom handlers to inner events of the component. Let's add an on after select event with function that sets the value on multi-view. It will show the view according to the selected sidebar item's ID. And we can add a ready function to initialize select sidebar item that we need. So here we have a sidebar that loads views in the multi-view widget. We can see that multi-view by default has animation set to true. We can change it to false. As an alternative for sidebar, you can use the WebEx side menu widget. While we are talking about navigation and alternatives, we could very easily turn this multi-view into a tab view, or we could add a segmented control to our multi-view. Here's how we can do that. Add a row layout and place the tab bar in the first row. We set the multi-view to true and tell where to get data for the options. And it works. Cool, right? Then we can change tab bar to segmented control. And we have a segmented control to switch between views. We will leave only sidebar for our project. We can add a toggle to our sidebar. 
This will ensure that our toolbar can be minimized. And it works! Sidebar menu can be collapsed into a navigation bar with only icons of the menu items visible. On hovering an icon, a pop-up with the related item is shown with its sub-items. On clicking a sidebar menu item, either the related content is shown in the right part of the screen or selectable sub-items are displayed. Now that we have also a collapsed sidebar version, we can add width and collapsed width. Now that our navigation is ready, we can add a little bit of style. I'll go to Style CSS and add some style. We can add the first menu item. Let's add special offers that we made in the previous videos. We will add even more items as we go further in the WebEx course. And here's how it looks. Special offers that we made previously is written in an HTML document. Since WebEx is a JavaScript library, it makes sense to call it from a JS file. Let's create a JS variable for special offers. For that, open special offers HTML. Let's put the CSS in our style CSS file. And we can take the JavaScript part of the code and create a new file. I put it in JS folder in my project. New file will have the same name, only the extension changes to JS. We can also move JSON data to data.js. Another thing that we can do is remove WebEx UI and create a variable. Instead of template, we will call our new variable in the multi view in a row layout. We add the square brackets because rows are expecting an object. And the final thing that we have to do is add our new JS files to the head section of the index.html. You can add your own data and create your own layouts and navigation.